My name is Daniel Stevenson. I'm the Extension Weed Science of the LSU Ag Center. Today I'll be talking to you about weed control in Louisiana row crop. The basis of any weed control program starts with burn down. And with burn down, most treatments have a glyphosate based, oftentimes with either 2,4-D, Elevore, Dicamba, or say an auction mixture of 2,4-D and Dicamba, for example, um, Weedmaster. Sometimes the auxin materials are left out and lead off is also used with glyphosate. Now we recommend um, burning down at least four to six weeks prior to planting. This gives the weeds time to die, gives the insects past time to either move on or die and less chance of regrowth or new emergence. However, if we're burning down out greater than six weeks, Oftentimes, you think you need a residual, and you will to maintain yourself clean, particularly if you're eight weeks out prior to planting. The one problem that you face is that if you have significant ground cover, either due to cover crops or due to weed biomass, if you don't see about 70% dirt or soil out there through that when you're walking across the field, you're not going to get an effective um, action of a residual because that herbicide will be intercepted by the leaf material and degraded. Um, it will burn, for example, Valor, when you tank mix this over glyphosate and lead off. You'll see some burn, make you feel good, but you're not really getting any residual control. So be cognizant of that when you make your decisions. These are a couple of pictures that I wanted to show you of Elevore at one ounce, 14 days after treatment. The top left is Elevore, the bottom right is a full pound of 2,4-D. The reason I show this to you is Elevore has proven to be an exceptional herbicide for henbit control, which is our number one pest. In, um, in Louisiana, it's the most common, maybe not the most troublesome. But um, these treatments were applied to henbit that was has already began to senesce and actually has some powdery, powdery mildew. So you can see by the photos there the difference. And at 28 days, the, the Elevore was approximately 100% controlled, so almost to completely annihilated or eliminated the hen bit, and the 2,4-D was maybe an 80% or 8 out of 10. So you can see the power of Elevore in a burn down if hen bit is your concern. Next, probably the most problematic weed that we have to concern ourselves with at, at burn down is Italian ryegrass. And many of you may have seen this type of picture before. This is glyphosate resistant Italian ryegrass in an emerged corn crop. If you are at this stage and have this problem here in the next couple of months, unfortunately, I cannot help you from a herbicide standpoint. There's no herbicide that I can suggest you use or that any salesman can suggest you use that will remedy this situation. So therefore, we need to be thinking about this pest now, particularly if you're planting corn. Obviously, the best time to fight this pest is in the fall. You know, right before it's emerging or when it's very, very small, say with a paraquat plus a residual herbicide, an esmetolachlor, uh, a boundary type product that has esmetolachlor metribuzin, but we're past that. Right now we're in this uh, winter to very early spring stage where you need to be thinking about clethidem. Um, and there's various formulations of clethidem, either one, two, or three pound per gallon. This example we have here is Select Max, which is approximately a one pound per gallon. And we're suggesting use of 12 to 16 ounces per acre plus a crop oil. So the ryegrass is small. When I say small, I'm thinking four inches or less, maybe five. But once we start getting above six inches and we start getting multi-tillered, the effectiveness of clethidem actually decreases somewhat. Now, if you get past that, you've got really large ryegrass, multiple, multiple tillers, we're in the spring timing. So that's paraquat. Notice the rates three quarter to one pound of active ingredient per acre. Two applications of that 10 to 14 days apart. So let's take our box on, which is a two pound material. That's 48 to 64 ounces per acre plus a non ounce surfactant. And we suggest in that first application, use a pint of atrazine, co-applied with a gramoxone if you're going to corn, um, four ounces of metribuzin if you're going to soybeans, or a pint of diuron if you're going into cotton. This actually helps and assists the, the gramoxone in um, desiccating and, and killing and burning the ryegrass. Now I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. The first one here is success and failure of clethidium. We are having instances where clethidium is failing in Louisiana. They've already documented Italian ryegrass as being resistant to clethidium in Mississippi. 
we do have suspected populations, but this is an example of what I want you to look for. So if you have this problem, call your county agent or contact me. The next picture I want to show you is what ryegrass looks like following two applications of Paraquat. And that's going to be quite hard to plant through. And I'm sure you can understand that you'd almost have to have your planter set up to use in a cover crop situation. So you may be thinking, well, all I need is one application. Here's a picture of one application of Paraquat to ryegrass. You can see the, the regrowth. So if you're planting corn, this is very problematic. If you're going into soybeans or cotton, it still could be quite problematic for us as we move in the future. So attack this pest now. Do not delay. Moving into corn, corn weed control really can be divided um, amongst when you plant. What I mean by that is, is it can require one herbicide application or potentially two. If you're planting in late February to early March, which is when we typically plant in the state of Louisiana, it doesn't matter whether you put the herbicide out pre or post. Now, all, all herbicide programs are based around atrazine. So based off the data I have, atrazine plus esmetolachlor plus a non-selective, let's say glyphosate or glufosinate, Liberty, if you have some Liberty Link or Herculex type uh, tolerance corn, then that would be a good program for you. If you're planning in mid-March or later, <clears throat> that's why I believe, and based off data, we need two applications, a pre followed by post. Why is that? Summer annual weeds typically emer emerge in about the second week to the April 15th. So think about that, around tax day. Well, if you plant mid-March, you know, set first, second week of March, that timing coincides, say we're putting out your fertilizer and putting on an eight to 12 inch herbicide application on that corn. The weeds are maybe an inch tall at the most. You completely annihilate them. If you plant later, you can have the summer annual weeds emerging with this young corn crop. We've got to protect that corn crop. Because as that corn crop is emerging, it is determining its yield and any sort of interference or you know, a weed growing beside it can hamper its growth, thus reduce your yield. Now, if you're in the central part of the state, and as you move up into Catahoula and Concordia Parish, they're getting Johnson uh, glyphosate-resistant Johnson grass. Herbicides such as Corvus Pre or Caprino Post are two excellent choices for management of that particular pest. Moving on into grain sorghum, we're going to have uh, substantially more acres of grain sorghum here in the state of Louisiana. And based off years of research, the best program for full season weeds management is a pre-emerge herbicide applied right behind the planter followed by a post-emergence herbicide. So for example, you pre-say atrazine or esmetolachlor, just like you use in corn. Lexar EZ or Verdict are two other options. We do not have any um, GMO type grain sorghum, so your best post-emergence application is another uh, treatment with atrazine plus esmetolachlor applied around 8 to 12 inch corn. We do have other post options, 2,4-D, dicamba, facet L, peak, permit, husky. The problem with those are is they do not offer grass control. Now, per facet can provide some grass control, but you need a substantial amount of water to really get it activated to provide good grass control. Post-harvest weed management. You wonder why I may be placing this behind grain sorghum than just behind corn. Typically, we harvest our corn in, in August. First of August and grain sorghum is right behind it. And oftentimes, if we mow the grain sorghum stalks and we got the corn stalks, we can have weed emergence. There's a long time between harvest of either one of these two crops until we have that first frost, oftentimes anywhere from zero to, uh, to five to five months. Weeds such as glyphosate resistant palm amaranth, various grass weeds, brown top millet, broadleaf cinnamon grass, barnyard grass, even volunteer corn. But the palm amaranth and the various grass weeds can produce weed seed. Thus, you have seed rains here replenishing the soil seed bank. So essentially, you're giving yourself more problems next year by increasing the number of potential problems of weeds that you could have in, in subsequent years. So we suggest doing something, um, whether it be mowing, tillage, using a herbicide. Now, that choice depends on you. And what I like to see and would suggest is mow as soon as possible after harvest. So you destroy any emerged weeds, tillage three or four weeks later, and apply herbicide, herbicide treatment three to four weeks after that. Why three to four weeks? Well, research has shown that glyphosate-resistant Palmer amaranth and most other pigweeds at that time, from emergence to when that plant has a viable seed, is approximately a month. So that's the reason for the sequencing of doing this. 
Moving on into cotton weed control, you guys have five different herbicide technologies available currently. The Roundup Rita Flex, which is only tolerant to glyphosate, the old standard. Liberty Link, which is glufosinate or Liberty. The stack of Glytol Liberty Link um, Enlist, which is a 2,4-D tolerant, as well as Extend, which is a dicamba tolerant. The reason I bring this to your attention is the fact that Extend is not tolerant to 2,4-D, Enlist is not tolerant to dicamba, and none of the other three are tolerant to dicamba or 2,4-D. So when you're doing your crop mix with cotton, and you're going, if you're going to plant two different technologies, make sure that you do some very good planting, maybe even mark the fields so that you won't have any uh-ohs. Regardless of the herbicide technology you use, research has shown over and over that a pre followed by two post applications are needed for full season weed management. And of all the pre's I've evaluated in cotton, it's really hard to beat Cotteram. If you've got a, a good, a bad pigweed problem, say the addition of break to cotteran so instead of a quart of cotteran you could have a pint of cotteran plus a pint of break caprol can be substituted for cotteran but you should expect less weed control from the post-emergence i'm talking two to three leaf cotton post-emergence over the top followed by eight leaf cotton post-emergence over the top and non-selective whether if you're in extend cotton as glyphosate in a dicamba formulation plus esmetolachlor or warrant and make sure you look at the label, see if that's a legal application. Both of these are. And don't forget lay-by. Guys, we still have MSMA, Valor, and Diuron that we can spray underneath the crop. That is a very good option for weed management in cotton. Here's a couple of pictures to show you the power of a pre-emerge herbicide. On the left is just a non-selective applied to two to three leaf cotton. This is 14 days after treatment. You can see we have dying weeds. And on the right, there is no weeds. But what I want to bring your attention to is look at the, the size difference of the cotton in these two photos. That is predominantly because the pre-emerge herbicide protected that cotton early season from any kind of early season weed, um, weed competition. This is the power of pre-emerge herbicide in cotton. Moving into soybeans, our farmers in Louisiana and throughout the U.S have eight different type of herbicide technologies. Now being conventional, Roundup Ready, Liberty Link, Bold STS, Extend, Enlist, Liberty Link GT27, and now Extendiflex. Most of all these we're familiar with based off the fact that you can see the, the herbicides that are listed there. I will bring your attention to Liberty Link GT27 and the product called Elite 27. This soybeans it are tolerant to this herbicide. However, it's not labeled for use in the state of Louisiana. And then I'll bring you attention to Extendiflex. This is dicamba tolerant soybeans that is now tolerant to the herbicide glufosinate, which is sold as Liberty plus others. But I will tell you, do not, and you cannot, tank mix any formulation of glufosinate with either Ingenia, Extendimax, or Tavium. Post-residuals, we have three choices, esmetolachlor, warrant, or residua. Um, I highly suggest that in your first post-emergence application in soybeans that you utilize one of these three with the non-selective. You also still have all the others, the prefix, the cobra, the flex star that you can use later in the season. But if we plant it right with a pre-emerge herbicide behind the planter and then a residual herbicide in your first post, oftentimes you won't need any of these later season herbicide applications. And then we have a laundry list of pre-emerge herbicides. Now you, you made this list if you can control pigweeds. However, this, uh, all, not all these herbicides control our entire weed spectrum. Our growers in Louisiana, you guys face anywhere from two to four different grass species and two to six different broadleaf species. So I'll give you an example. If you have pigweeds, nutsedge, and grasses, that's your predominant problem. Valor is not a good choice for you. Boundary is. Fierce is. Canopy plus dual magnum is a good choice for you. Now, if you have pigweeds, morning glories, and, um, and prickly cider, something like Authority Leader Broad Axe, Authority MTZ, Valor, XLT or Valor Fierce, um, the Authority First or Sonic, those are good fits for you. Now, an overall good treatment that I have found is Canopy Plus Dual Magnum. Works very, very well. You just got to watch your pH with the, the rate of Canopy. 
and here in the central part of the state where pH is running well above seven, um, four ounces of canopy plus a pint of dual magnum does wonders for overall weed management in the soybeans. Here's a couple of pictures, very similar to what we saw with the cotton. This is endless soybean. On the left is uh, um, early post only, so the two to three um, trifoliate soybean versus on the right, pre-emerge herbicide followed by the early post treatment. So endless duo plus warrant or pre followed by endless duo plus warrant. You see the difference there in the protection and, the, and how well our weed management is with the two pass program. Next one is an extend soybeans, Roundup Power Max plus Ingenia plus Zidua, followed by um, or pretty much herbicide followed by the same post. You can see dramatic difference. Those pigweeds that are in that picture on the left, they didn't die. They stunted, they stayed green, and then they continue to grow later in the season. So again, you see the power of pre emerge herbicide. Looking at the extend cotton and soybeans, I bring this attention to you because there have been some changes to the label. Number one, I'm gonna tell you, and I put it in all caps, read the label. You have stricter buffer requirements. No applications after July 30th, post-emergence of dicamba in extend cotton. No dicamba applications after June 30th in soybeans. Now this shouldn't be an, a, a factor for our growers unless we're planting, say, some double crop soybeans after wheat or maybe even plant cotton after wheat. And then another thing that I'm pretty sure not many of us adhere to is we have to use a minimum of 15 GPA. Also this year and going forward, we have to use a pH buffering agent. That's because the, uh, as you tank mix glyphosate and dicamba, the, the pH of the, the spray solution um, drops below five. That increases the chances of volatility. So for Ingenia, BASF has a pro, uh, product called Centrus that will help buffer the pH. They may have others. Right now their website doesn't say. Extendamax, they have 13 distributor products. That product must say, you know, whatever the name is, Daniel's Hellfire, a Vapor Grip Extra Agent. Now for Tavium, you do have 13 as, as well, but only 11 of the same ones that can, that can be used for Extendamax can be used for Tavium. Tavium also has two nutritions, two nutritionals, Locomotum and Maximum Impact K that can be used as a pH buffering agent. I advise you to go to the websites to look at those. Next big change is the allowed glyphosate formulations. There are only nine that are allowed with Ingenia. You can see them here. There's an addition, there's 14 in Extended Max. Now Tavium only has uh, five that you see listed here. They could be more added in the future. I know Syngenta is looking at more currently. So that brings us to the other tank mixes. So there's been little changes other than glyphosate. Here are the websites for the three dicamba products that can be utilized and extend cotton and soybean. All you have to do is like type Ingenia tank mix in your search engine, hit enter. It's going to pop up or Extendamax tank mix or Tavium tank mix, and this information will show up. Looking at enlist cotton and soybean, so this is a 2,4-D tolerant cotton and soybean. Again, read the label because there are specific rules of the buffer and tips and other things. No major changes to the label, and they do have for a page for tank mixes, enlist tank mix. And I'll show you the tank mix you can use with enlist duo, the tank mix you can use with enlist one. So I'm going to leave you with this, uh, weed management. Look at these photos. I showed them to you earlier. This is without a pre. We don't want to be in this situation, men. We have some powerful tools for our post-emergence weed, weed control, but we need to make sure we use a residual herbicide pre to protect the crop. So our take-home point, residual herbicide pre followed by residual plus non-selective post, something we need to make sure that we do. So this weed, this is a glyphosate-resistant palm amaranth. We've all seen this grow around the edge of a field when we're riding around. What does it take to go pull that weed? Because is it resistant and do you want to risk it? So go pull it up, put it in the back of your truck, take it to your burn pile, set it on fire, crack your favorite beverage and watch it burn. That's the way that we can avoid having resistance run rampant on our farm. So with that, I thank you very much. Um, if you need to get in touch with me, here's my mobile number. It's the best way to reach me. You can also talk with uh, Justin. 
and um, we could get some help. So with that, I thank you very much, and I hope you have a blessed day.